And Big Cabot, um, Silverado, The Big Chill, They Leap to Mind, oh, certainly The Fly, Creeps to Mind. And these are all unique films, all of them having something in common, and that's the unique actor Jeff Goldblum. His uh, latest film is called Fathers and Sons. And again, it's different from typical Hollywood, which seems to be a distinguishing mark with him. He's not your typical leading man, nor mine. Now, why would he want to be? I plan to ask Jeff Goldblum, and here he is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good to see you. Dick, very, very good to see you. I was you. thanking you for being here, and then and I guess you're thanking me for... For, for thanking for me. For thanking me. For, yes. Yeah. This I, is... Uh, we've certainly started on a high level here. And I don't hope absolutely. We can, <laughs> it's all, hey, hope we can only go down. Maintain this. You know, I, I just <laughs> suffered a humiliation in the lobby of the... Uh, Riga Royal, which is where, where we're royally treated here today, uh, about my size. I'm sorry. I told you before no, you didn't do it. A man said to me, I thought you were taller. This is terrible. Look yeah. at you. Um, yeah. But he, he didn't say it quite that nicely. Horrible. Now, I read Horrible about your body say. every time they write about you. What's this? Well, they always say you're <laughs> gangly, and you came in quite gracefully. Oh, yeah. Does gangly mean um, uh, awkward in some way? I don't know, but it's a nice, it's a word that usually is affectionate. I mean, in, in theater, it's a cliche that all who gangle are kind and true. Um, so I never I guess, heard that. It must not be a cliche enough. I never heard that. What, what is it? All, all that are gangly? Or? Well, I, that's just one way of putting it. It just seems that if anybody gangles, you know, he's going to be a nice guy in the play or something. <laughs> yeah. I never well, heard of a serial killer gangling. Mm. Mm. The words get Tony kinda... Perkins was a little gangly and yes, Michael, wasn't he? Yes, and 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 uh, and therefore my example falls. Well, I, I no no, <laughs> as they say in high school debate. Oh. Uh, mostly, do people uh, who recognize you in the street mention one particular work or they 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 don't? No no no. Um, I've done a bunch of stuff, and some will say, oh. Into the Night, it's my uh -huh. favorite thing somebody did today, or uh, Bakru Bonds, or, you, know, you know what, I like Ten Speed and Brown Shoe, or, you know, The Fly, I, you know, Fly, there's a lot of Fly stuff. I would have thought The Fly, maybe. I think most, finally, mostly, yes. Yeah, Big Chill, probably maybe second, or... You're right. Alternating in first. You're um, right, you're yeah. right. Uh, there, there's a story, I, I had no idea about this, that Kevin Costner... Yes went through what must have been one of those humiliating things that could happen to an actor making the fly. I mean, making the big chill. Mm. Uh, he was also cut out of the fly, too. He was, he he was, was cut out of two things? No, no, I'm only kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> After that humiliating we fall, I didn't want you to suffer another. No, I'm uh, so, just trying yeah, to thank say you it. for no. helping me there. But I couldn't, but the people would, uh, you know, archivists would actually be able to bear that out. Yeah. He was yeah. never in the fly. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll add a footnote here. <laughs> but t what was it? He. First of all, to say, Ma, I got a part in a movie, guess what? Oh, oh, wonderful, what are you? Well, I'm the dead body? Was that what he was going to be in? No, 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 not exactly. Oh, get straighten no. it out for oh, me. Oh, okay, here's the way it actually goes. He, yes, he was the dead body in The Big Chill, who you see in the beginning. That was meant to be him, but the part went, uh, was larger than that, too, yeah. because there was a flashback originally intended and shot and cut into the first rough cut of the movie that had us uh, all at the end of the movie in uh, 60s stuff and back in 1968 and uh, preparing a Thanksgiving dinner at, uh, uh, you know, uh, Michigan. So we'd have seen him alive in that So you see, yes. So you see him alive. That's right. That's oh, right. see, I thought he not only played a corpse only yeah, but got cut out because he wasn't good enough as the corpse. No. Um, somewhere if you can believe anything you read these days, yeah. there's a skinhead who doesn't know that he inspired a movie. Uh-huh. Do I have that right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Paul Monas, the director of, of this movie, Fathers and Sons, um, opening November 6th, mm -hmm. um, said he was inspired, that's right, by, um, and he was in Washington Square Park and saw this young 16-year-old he assumed, I, don't, I, I, I think he assumed non-fascist, I don't know why he, anyway, a guy who had no hair, a skinhead kid, but who was uh, amazingly um, liquid in the eyes, soulful looking, sensitive, yeah. uh, sweet, troubled, 
new, fresh, newborn, all that. And he went home and wrote, and Max Fish sits on the porch of his house, and he's got large, liquid eyes. And, uh, that's, that's fascinating, because yeah, I know where he said that about fascists, because he said something like, although a skinhead, he did not seem to be a fascist. He seemed to be seemed a nice to be, he said, yes. in some way, and the contrast between the skinhead and what you usually think they are. Well, so you, you know, I, said, I think you can tell political orientation, can't you, from somebody's look? Possibly. You think you can. You, you uh, sometimes you're chillingly surprised, which yeah. is in fact the, the, uh, the, the, the um, origin of the big chill. What that really means, although it has other po poetic resonances, I think Larry said, Larry Kasdan, who wrote it, said came out of a real experience he had at a party where he was talking to this guy seemingly full of lip and liberal mm -hmm. of features who came out with a remark that chilled him to his core. Aha. Uh -huh. So yes, I think you're right. But on the other hand, yeah. and there are often two hands with these things, I think you can, I think, in my experience, you can now, all these Republicans, you know, seem to have a similar, similar look. There is a look, though, as a set of the eye and the mouth to certain parts of the political spectrum. I swear that's true, too. I I've never heard anybody so. else say that, but oh, I think because so. it sounds in the state of political correctness but you can't like tell we're a book by offending cover. people. Yeah, but no, I think political sensibility kind of goes with your yeah. some, something. And I found if it says War and Peace on the cover, that's very often what the book is about. So Absolutely. We're so good, I can't wait to see this show. <laughs> we'll, we'll be right back with, with more of this with Jeff Goldblum and... Uh, there's a lot of very sinister stuff ahead, so you might want to put the children to bed. We'll be right back.